I live uh, in a really old uh, house where my great grandparents lived. And uh, a couple of other generations had lived in it before that. When I first moved there from Lexington, I had a, a strong sense of being connected through that place uh, with, with the people who lived there before. Not in the sense that I saw shadowy uh, shadowy figures or her knocking or anything, but just in the sense that I knew uh, that when I sat in front of that fireplace, that people had sat in that same fireplace uh, for nearly 200 years in front of the same fireplace, and that many people had been born and died in that place. And so, that all seemed all right then, and, and I felt a, a part of something uh, just from, from living there. Um, and so I wrote a book about it, which became a children's book called Home Place, and, uh, which is now print. But when it was, uh, when the book was new, I would go around to uh, elementary schools and uh, read it to kids and talk about it. And, uh, you know, when we talk to children about writing or anything and then ask for uh, questions, you never know what you're going to say, which is one thing I really like about you know, working with children. Often when I would uh, give my presentation about writing and then ask if they had any questions, their questions would usually be things like, can I go to the bathroom? <laughs> or are you rich? Um, do you know my mom? Do you have any bubble gum? And things like that. And then a lot of times after I would talk about that book, uh, they would, about the house, and talk about the house, they would say, uh, the same question, is it haunted? And uh, like most questions, I found a way to make them answer that with a simple yes or no, and had to write a poem about it. So it's, it's called Homeless. Is it haunted? The fifth grade wants to know. When I tell them I live in, live in an old, old house where my family has lived for 100 years, the children are well versed in local pains. There's a woman gets in the car with you. If you stop on a foggy night and house was being, she'll ride to the graveyard and then get out. You can see straight through her. A boy and a girl got killed one time by robbers of the six inch rock. And when it rains, that rock oozes blood. It does. You can see it from the parkway. A long time ago, a day was hanged to sell from a cliff up on Rocky Branch. My uncle says if you're up to a front, you can see that fellow swing. <laughs> no, I tell them I don't believe in ghosts. I don't mention the bacon I smell frying winter mornings before daylight when all I've got is oatmeal. The blue clad figure at the edge of the field, the smoke still rising from long dead fires, the crowd forever poorly dressed, always crossing the Atlantic in crowded boats, forever with their dogs, their children, their baptizings, funeral dinners, their sick beds, always grubbing new grass with dog homes. To tell the truth, sometimes I wish they'd let me alone. It's hard to draw a good breath around here. I entertain fantasies an apartment off in the city somewhere, near theaters at a Greek restaurant, or a small private cottage by the sea. But they follow, I know they would, wash their feet, pack a cheap suitcase, and tag along. I can see me now trying to negotiate the New York subway with this bunch in tow. <laughs> they never change. Aaron always showing off how he can name every county in Kentucky. Bernice telling you her dreams every morning, Jean with his childish pranks, and Meg with her sad stories like somebody you never heard of drowning in the river or some child a hundred years ago dying of a fever. Now, what am I supposed to do with that? And the beach is out. They have to have shut beans wherever they are and red eye green. We can't even run up to the county seat without dragging that enormous trunk of old pictures and all that slow, mournful singing doesn't go over with the beach crowd. 
But nobody ever asked me, are you haunted? 